Welcome back to Fuqua Sports, and we are only two weeks away from the college football playoff. A lot of news I want to share with you, but first, if you're new, we're using our college mod on Access Football 2024 with updated rosters and playbooks. 80 teams are competing in this simulation, just like in the proposed Super League, with 10 teams in each division and teams playing all of their division foes once. Here is the division alignment that we're using, and you can view the entire pitch deck that discusses the exact divisions of the Super League by clicking on the link in the description below, which is also the same link at the bottom of this graphic. 24 teams will make the playoffs, with the 8 division winners getting first round buys. They will be seeded 1 through 8 based on their position in the rankings, and based on how the rankings have played out so far, I can almost guarantee that at least 7 of the division winners will be ranked, so we won't come across the issue of 2 or more unranked division winners. The remaining 16 teams will receive at-large bids based on the order that they finish in the rankings, with the top 8 teams getting to host the bottom 8 teams on their own campuses in the first round of the playoffs. But without further ado, here are the scores from Week 10, a week that saw 5 ranked matchups, 2 more undefeated teams lost, which means Penn State is the last undefeated team in the league. You saw on YouTube that top-ranked Oregon lose to Arizona, as well as second-ranked Clemson losing to Florida State. The Oregon-Arizona game wasn't even close, as Arizona dominated the time of possession battle, and the game was once 41-16 in Arizona's favor in the third quarter. The other game was pretty close, which saw Clemson drive down to the Florida State 37-yard line, but without any timeouts, they couldn't stop the clock to set up for a game-tying field goal, and the Seminoles escaped with an upset win. We thought UCF was turning things around after giving Florida State their first loss of the season last week, but instead they got upset in Durham by Duke. 4th ranked Oklahoma lost big to Texas A&M, 6th ranked Missouri lost and Oklahoma State and LSU lost as well, that makes it 6 ranked teams to lose, 4 in the top 10, and on the other end of the spectrum, BYU got their first division win at home against Minnesota, leaving Indiana and Vanderbilt as the only two teams without a division win. No surprises there though, but Indiana's best shot at winning was probably this past week when they played Northwestern, but they just couldn't get the job done on the road. We're actually going to do things a little bit differently than in past weeks and reveal the college football rankings first because I have a new graphic set for the standings and the week 11 schedule. But here are the rankings, Penn State jumps to first, being the only undefeated team left. Oregon doesn't fall too far after being first place the entire season. Can't say the same about Clemson, Oklahoma, and Missouri who all moved down 5. Florida State, Georgia, Texas, and Arizona get rewarded for their ranked wins. Iowa State and Tennessee, while still getting victories, weren't too impressive and unfortunately dropped a couple of spots below Texas and Arizona. NC State had a nice 10-point win over Florida. The Gators are still on this graphic despite the loss, but the Wolfpack dropped out of the rankings as the committee simply couldn't leave out an 8-win Boise State team. Not that it matters though, because if the Broncos win the circuit flex, they're jumping all the way up to a top 8 seed and a first round by in the playoffs regardless if they're ranked or not. As far as the playoff bubble goes, Notre Dame, NC State, and Miami are the first three teams out, while well, obviously LSU, Virginia Tech, and Utah are the last three teams in. So again, we're doing things a little bit differently these next couple weeks. We're showing both the standings and the Week 11 schedule going division by division as we focus on the division title races. Starting off with the circuit flex, Boise State has a one-game lead over Tulane and Liberty. They would have already won the division had they beaten Tulane two weeks ago, as the Broncos would have been 9-0 with a head-to-head -head tiebreaker over Liberty. But instead, with the upset, the race is still alive. Liberty needs to win out, and Boise State has to lose out, while Tulane only needs to win out and Boise State to lose only once, thanks to their head-to-head -head tiebreaker. The Week 11 schedule is to the right of your screen, with the game in bold being shown on YouTube. In this case, it will be Tulane and Toledo, as a green wave attempt to catch Boise State. In the West Division, after Oregon's loss, there's now a three-way tie for first. Washington is already eliminated from the hunt as their three losses came to USC, Arizona, and Oregon. However, Washington State still has an outside chance to win, as they have yet to play USC, but they do need all three of the top teams to lose out to even have a chance. Arizona plays the lowly UCLA Bruins, and Oregon State hosts Oregon in the Civil War, which is also this week's main event. In the Southwest, Oklahoma, Texas, and Oklahoma State are tied up top with A&M, Baylor, and SMU just one game behind. Arkansas actually has wins over both Oklahoma and Texas, and could play spoiler again and beat Oklahoma State. But unfortunately, the Razorbacks are already eliminated from contention, since they need both the Sooners and the Longhorns to lose out. And if you look at the remaining schedules, Baylor would end up winning out if Oklahoma and Texas lost, thus eliminating Arkansas in the process. Still though, a lot of teams are in the race, but only Oklahoma, thanks to a head-to-head -head win over Texas and a potential win over Oklahoma State, controls their own destiny for the division title. 
In the Great Plains, Kansas State, Iowa, and Iowa State are in their own three-way tie for first. Utah is a game behind, but will be eliminated if Iowa or Iowa State wins as both teams own tiebreakers over the Utes. Nebraska, who has won 6-1, has the toughest three-game finale of any team. They lost to Kansas State last week, they play Iowa State this week, and will finish off in the Heroes game next week. But depending on the results from this week, Nebraska might be featured all three times these last three weeks. I mean, hey, it's a nice benchmark for us to compare Kansas State, Iowa, and Iowa State, having all played a common opponent at roughly the same time in the season. In the Midwest, Ohio State and Michigan lead over Louisville and Missouri. This will culminate with the game in Week 12. It doesn't matter how this week goes, but if Ohio State beats Michigan, Missouri is eliminated from contention, and if Missouri beats Ohio State, Louisville is eliminated from contention based off of head-to-heads. But for Week 11, the schedule isn't great, and the Louisville-Michigan State game is the only one that features two teams with a winning record. Indiana is also looking for the first win of the season. They had their best chance so far to pick up a win last week, but they just couldn't put away Northwestern. The Hoosiers got to finish at home with a game for the old Oaken Bucket and a game against Cincinnati who has a losing record in the regular season finale. So there's a chance they could steal one or both of those games for their wins. Since Penn State is undefeated, the Northeast race is pretty simple. The Nittany Lions have tiebreakers over Virginia Tech and Notre Dame, so all they need for the division title is one win over the next two weeks or one Virginia Tech loss in the final two weeks. It's kind of a weak slate in this division as well this week, but we'll see if Penn State can lock up a North Division title this week when they hit the road against Boston College. Credit to the Eagles though, they've quietly fought hard for a winning record, and we'll see if they can keep it when the season finishes. In the Southeast, Florida State is undefeated against all of their other division contenders, giving them the inside track for the division title. The Seminoles can win the division this week if they win and Clemson loses, since they have the tiebreaker over literally everyone in the division except UCF somehow. Hey, it's any given Sunday, right? Though it's no easy task to go to williams Bryce Stadium, as South Carolina will bring a sandstorm in hopes of a wild upset. And finally, in the South, there's a big fat log jam up top, and it's been that way the entire season. The teams have ripped each other apart this season so much so that the winner of the South, whoever that may be, will most likely be ranked in the bottom half of the 8 division winners come playoff time. But if the season ended today, Alabama would have the tiebreaker based on head-to-head -head within the top group of 4. Obviously, that could change if a team were to fall out of the division race, and that could very well happen when Mississippi State, who is guaranteed a winning record this season, plays Ole Miss in the Egg Bowl. Vanderbilt is still winless in division play if you look at their schedule. Yeah, there's no way they're winning a game this season. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And here's the entire YouTube schedule, and unlike last week where we had 5 ranked games in week 11, we actually have no ranked games the entire week. However, there's no shortage of competitive games that will all have an impact on the division race. 15 ranked teams are on the road, including all of the top 5 teams. It should be a lot of fun, and I've said it before, but something's gotta give. There's simply too many teams on upset alert for this not to be a crazy week, just 2 weeks away from the college football playoff.